as much fun as I had with Greg Silver, it just wasn't enough. He couldn't stick around for a part two. So we're doing a two-parter for Thursday Night Live. There's a lot going on with the Warriors. I want to break down some of Steve Kerr's recent history. A lot of people keep uh, evoking the, the, the nine rings, the four championships he's led the Golden State Warriors to. And it's that's fair. That's That's completely fair when you're bringing that up in terms of the argument for and against Steve Kerr, who may be on a hot seat considering he is a lame duck coach and considering the history I'm about to present to you over the last five years. Because when you look at the numbers of the last five years, they don't look or sound like the numbers of one of the greatest coaches in the history of the game. No, they, they sound like the numbers of an average coach. And a lot of his decision-making, whether you agree or not, is under the microscope and I feel is responsible for a lot of the malaise that's going on with the Golden State Warriors. I'll explain what I mean next. Stay tuned. This is Locked On Warriors. You are Locked On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get podcasts and on YouTube. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel, the official sports book of the Locked On Podcast Network. I cannot thank them enough for re-upping with the network for all of 2024. Thank you, FanDuel, and make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. You can follow me, Cyrus Sotsis, on threads at Dog Wild. Super easy. Yes, we're doing a second live show. I even typed it out in the chat for people joining us on the live edition. And again, we're only live on YouTube. It's the only place you can catch the live programs. Of course, immediately afterwards, we're available as a recorded version on YouTube. And also, of course, on all podcast platforms. Uh, <laughs> no, Blimey01 Menard. Uh, no rants broke the stream. I actually stepped away between parts one and part two uh, to upload a video that um, I wanted to play on the show tonight, which I'll get to in just a moment. Uh, but first, uh, I want to start the discussion with Steve Kerr and more specifically the starting lineup of the Golden State Warriors. Uh, you know, I played the attribution last night of Steve Kerr talking about Jonathan Kaminga and, and you know, give, he praised them uh, in a backhanded kind of way. He also mentioned that uh, Moses Moody and Brandon Pajemski, quote unquote, earned their spots in the rotation, which insinuates Jonathan Kaminga has not earned it, which is kind of crazy. But he also, uh, uh, he said a lot. And I want to start the show with another uh, attribution that he said. And this is pertaining to the starting lineups in general. Um, and it's newsworthy, and it's, and it's absolutely uh, worthy of bringing up on the program tonight because this is the first time I've ever heard Steve Kerr make any references alluding to the possibility of the players we're accustomed to seeing in the starting lineup, maybe not there. Let's listen to Steve Kerr and hear what he has to say about moving forward with the Warriors starters. Do you feel like when you go against a team going in now, you you kind of know we just got to we got to play our maybe our athletic lineup or whatever the case may be. I mean, I think that's a that's a great point, um, and we talk about it every day. Um, you know, we we I'm, I've really been. Um, patient and hoping to get our first unit, you know, from the last couple of years um, into a good groove. It's just easier to play and to coach uh, when everybody knows exactly where they fit in. At least he, he admits that it's a million times easier when you're starting five <laughs> is set in place. When you're starting five is kicking absolute ass. So you can just sit back and enjoy the ride. That has been the first five years of Steve Kerr's reign as the head coach of the Warriors. It wasn't that hard because you had deep teams. 
you had in 2017 arguably the greatest team in the history of the NBA. I still think the 96 Bulls have a very slight edge, but you can make the argument. And the last five years, he hasn't had these super deep teams. Yes, he won the title in 2022, but the other four years, this year included, haven't been that smooth. Anyways, I digress. Continue on. And uh, role players, uh, it's easier to play a role when, you know, the, uh, there's kind of a set rotation and, you know, the, the stars are playing well and all that. So everything, you know, the puzzle kind of fits. So to be honest, the puzzle hasn't fit this year. And we've had a lot of guys playing well, but um, we we may have to think about, you know, moving the, the starting lineup around game to game, depending on who we're facing. I'd still prefer to get something solid, but um, we haven't really established uh, anything this year. And, and uh, you know, we're a quarter of the way through. So there's definitely, uh, you know, a lot of thought that's going to have to go into this. Steve. All right. And that was Steve Kerr's comments again. Um, what that means, we have no idea. I mean, it, there wasn't a lot of specifics there, but ultimately, if he's referring to certain players who may be, uh, I don't know, guards, small forwards, um, I'm encouraged because right now, if there's two players who are not carrying their weight, it's Andrew Wiggins 1A, Clay Thompson 1B. Now, will we actually see change? I have no idea. Um, <laughs> Nick Fenske, great to see you, by the way. Uh, saying blah 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 yeah a lot of what um steve kerr says is absolute just filler i but look here's why i'm i've lost a lot of faith in in coach steve kerr and if you've been listening to this program from the time i started hosting it it's been over two years now which is crazy if you think about it um i never once criticized steve kerr and, and again my background in media goes back to literally the year 2000 when i started working at kane br and i was there for 10 years close to that um and in more recent times starting with the Rick Barry show. Him and I have been doing that together since 2018, I think. Um, I never once criticized Kerr. Never. I I honestly loved his body of work. I respected his mind. I absolutely loved the fact that he was following in the footsteps of two of the greatest coaches ever. He played for them. He learned from them, referring to Phil Jackson and Greg Popovich. And it wasn't until last year when all of a sudden I started seeing decision after decision after decision that was just mind boggling. That just befuddled. That was nonsensical. Um, you know, if you're again, if you're an everydayer, you're very familiar with, you know, my feelings on on two way players getting more minutes last year than Jonathan Kaminga is getting this year, referring to Anthony Lamb and Ty Jerome. That made no damn sense. Imagine if Steve Kerr at the start of last season actually played Kaminga and Moody night in and night out for 25, 30 minutes a night. What is the worst that could have happened? You make the playoffs and lose in the second round. <laughs> the best case scenario, those two players are way ahead of schedule than they are now. So when I saw that last year, I started kind of looking at this, at his decision-making and I started really taking a closer look at the operations of this team. And, then, and I started seeing, and I'm seeing flags, just flags pointing up everywhere, right? The, the, the One of the biggest flags is the impact of this team after Mike Brown left. You, you lost a workhorse who was very organized, who was very detail-oriented. And again, you're seeing the Mike Brown effect with the Sacramento Kings. But after last year, we also saw John Mamala Layla leave, right? Very under-the-radar decision. This was the team's number two assistant after Kenny Atkinson just left in a lateral move that he claimed was more for his family. My sources in the Warriors say otherwise. That Jama read the writing on the wall. He saw a team whose direction he did not like or agree with, and he got the hell out of the dodge. I look at Collins, his longtime assistant. Was it Jason Collins? I forget which, I always forget which twin was the assistant for the Warriors. I can't remember if it was Jason or John. Um, but... He bounced inexplic inexplicably, lateral move to another organization. In that case, my understanding is, because there was, there was never like a lot of reports on that, but supposedly Collins was forced out because he started to not like the direction the team was going. And the more I'm paying attention to this, and by the way, 
Chris Weems, who is now their number, the, the new number two assistant after John Malalela, reports say he's in charge of rotations, substitutions. Ultimately, that's still a Kerr decision. But the, the, the assistant coaches are certainly raising flags. I'm looking at the substitution patterns. I'm looking at the blind loyalty to certain veterans. Here is Steve Kerr's track record the last five years. Since the team made the NBA Finals in 2019. In 2020, look, no head coach was going to come in and, and save the day with that squad. I mean, Steph Curry was out after four games after his hand got crushed by, I forgot the name of that player now, who was on the what the Celtics, I think, the center, who just fell on him and just shattered his hand. Um, look, that team was a wash. That, th there was no hope for that team anyways. Now, what disturbs me is the fact that you have a 15-win season. You're the worst team in the NBA. You sacrifice a whole year of everyone's lives who watch this team and follow this team. And you draft James Wiseman and then you invest no time in him. You barely play him. And then you trade him away for a player that you never should have let go in the first place. And Gary Payne, the second that should not be given a pass. Okay. Our actions in this world should have consequences. And I don't think Steve Kerr can just get away with whatever he wants to do ramifications be damned so they have a 15 win season following year 2020 2021 they started first 30 games 16 and 14 they finished the season 39 and 33 six games above 500 they won their last six games to avoid a 500 season entirely because of Stephen curry who i'll argue till the end of time should have won an mvp that season for what he did but that was an average at best team, okay? 2022, you have a deep roster. You have a stacked team. You have your one good year of Jordan Poole. You have Stephen Curry breaking the all-time three-point record. They started the year 18-2. and two. They went 24-6. and six. They won the title. Awesome. Okay, but that was a deep-ass team who scored big with Nemanja Bielitsa, who scored big with Otto Porter Jr., Cannot forget that Steve Kerr did not want Gary Payne II on his team, put him on waivers. He cleared waivers because no one else wanted him. And then Kerr begrudgingly brought him back. And then, of course, they let him go again a year later. Last year, they started the season 14 and 16 through the first 30 games. All right. And here we are in year five, 11 and 12. This is five years now. We're outside of one season where they won the title. They've been average at best, horrible at worst. And that's a that's a lot. That's a big body of work. Five years. All right. Other head coaches who have won championships have been fired for similar results. I'm looking at, at, at Coach Bud in Milwaukee. All right. I'm looking at Frank Vogel with the Lakers. All right. Their, their teams did not stay patient with them just because they won one championship. And so there, there's a possibility after the season, Steve Kerr, this might be it. He is a lame duck coach. He did not get the contract extension. And when I look at the last five years, that concerns me. So that is why I don't give him a blind, just a blind pass. I don't, I don't give Steve Kerr the benefit of the doubt. I absolutely scrutinize this, his decisions. And more times than not, they don't pass. So in just a moment, um, I, I'm going to play a, a, an interesting sound by uh, from two NBA Hall of Famers talking about the Warriors. I want to break that down. And I want to break down what lineups are actually working. Okay. If there's one lineup we know doesn't work anymore, it's the starting five from a year ago, which was awesome for two months. Keep in mind, they stopped playing together after December. But this year, they have the worst net rating in basketball. That same starting five. So I'm going to talk. I'm going to. Uh, uh, Read off which five-man lineups are actually working for the Warriors. Read some stats to you, which are kind of interesting in my book. First, though, got to give some love to FanDuel, the official sports book of the Locked On Podcast Network. Again, they re-upped uh, for 2024. I wanted to look at the chat real fast, see what's going on here. Diane writes, I think the loyalty separates him from someone like MJ, who cares about winning. Steve cares, but he also cares about the connections. Fair, but, you know, again, this is sports. I, look, if you don't care about the winning, 
you're gonna love Steve Kerr till the end, obviously. Okay, like I'm not I'm not judging him as a person. I'm judging him as a head coach, um, and the team's not winning that much. Um, Ken Mama brings up Dre should also shut his mouth and just play because it's working more against us than for us. That's fair, and that's another point of contention with Kerr how they how he and the team handled the Jordan Pool punch last year. I mean that that affected their whole season. Rich Dub, I do agree with this as well. Kerr has been lazy and has relied on vets to cover his shortcomings as a coach and bench manager. The reality is he has not developed the youth. 100% agree with you there. He hasn't developed a single player into an all-star. Kevon Looney is the only success story, not an all-star. And David Tapia, you're absolutely right. J Joe Lacob does have a say in this as well. And we're going to find out what kind of owner he is because all Joe Lacob talks about is world championships. And unless some serious changes are made to this roster this year, it's another season lost. Another season of Stephen Curry's prime. That's that's what gets to me particularly. Um, <laughs> Randall Cheney writes, uh, doesn't Lakeup understand that Curry's making terrible rotation decisions? Yes, I'm sure he does. Uh, he's also giving Curry the benefit of the doubt. My understanding is, this is a judgment year for Steve Kerr from Joe Lacob's perspective, but he's going to give him the whole year. All right. He's not going to make any decisions mid season. He's going to give Kerr this, this entire year to figure it out. Now, what happens after this season? Well, we're, we're going to, we're all going to find that out because again, Steve Kerr's contract is up. And if we have another disappointing run, you know, I, yeah, I don't, I don't know if he'll come back uh, for, but again, we got to give some love real fast. I I'm sorry. I'm horrible with the clock here today. Uh, let's give some love to FanDuel, again, who re-upped for the 2024 calendar year with the Locked On Podcast Network. Look, the weather is cold right now, but the NFL is staying hot on FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. So I don't know who won the Thursday night football game tonight. I know it's the Steelers and Patriots. Something tells me if you had bet the money line bet, and now I'm, I'm so curious, I got to look that up. Uh, you, if you hadn't placed a $5 money line bet on the Steelers, you probably would have come away with, oh no, the Patriots won. Okay. So that was, <laughs> oh no, the Patriots won the game. Okay. So you would have lost five bucks. The point is find a good money line bet, drop five bucks. And if you win that money line bet, you get 150 bucks. It's that simple. Okay. That, that is, that is the easiest money a bookie will ever give you. 150 bucks if your team wins. I would have lost five bucks betting on the Steelers tonight. That is pathetic that they lost to the Patriots. But regardless, you get the gist. Bet on a heavy favorite. Spend $5. Maybe it'll be $10 if you listen to me and, and lose five bucks on the Steelers. But the point is, win that $5 money line bet. Get $150 in your bank account. It's that simple. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action visit fanduel.com slash locked on and kick off the nfl season fanduel the official partner of the nfl you are locked on warriors your daily golden state warriors podcast part of the locked on podcast network your team every day thank you for making locked on warriors your first listen every day we got a national sports show on the Locked On Podcast Network. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. Let me see where we are with the clock here. All right. I'm going to do one more ad read and, and I'm going to play a soundbite from two Hall of Famers who talked about the Warriors. Uh, I found it interesting. And I think in a lot of ways it highlights what the ultimate problem is with the Warriors, which could lead to a trade discussion. Um, but got to give some love first to prize picks, which is absolutely legal in California, folks. Look, I know I just did a, a FanDuel read a moment ago. And if you live in California, that's a bummer. Because it's not legal. You got to go the VPN route if you want to gamble on sports. But not with price picks. And look, price picks is daily fantasy made easy. What does that mean? It means the approach is all about individual players, right? And, and it's, you're deciding whether or not a certain player is going to score more than or less than a certain amount. 
Maybe it's that that amount could be points. Maybe that amount could be assists. Maybe we're crossing the spectrum of sports and covering NFL rushing yardage or receptions or uh, passing touchdowns. Whatever the stat is, all you have to do is pick a minimum of two players, a maximum of six players, and you win money. It's that simple. It's super fun. It's legal here in California. And look, I play it all the time. Uh, if you engage with me on social media, I'm on threads. My handle's super easy there, at Dog Wild. I have a fun time. I, for the most part, win. Um, so if you ever want to pick my brain, let me know. Follow me there on threads at Dog Wild. But if you are confident in your own abilities, go to uh, pricepicks.com slash locked on NBA. Use the code locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to $100. One more time, play one of the funnest applications out there win some cash you can win a ton of cash if you nail a six player uh selection go to pricepicks.com slash locked on nba and use the code locked on nba for a first deposit match up to 100 dollars. you are locked on warriors your daily golden state warriors podcast part of the locked on podcast network your team every day Thank you for making Locked On Warriors your first listen. Uh, Ken Mamba asked an interesting question in the chat. In my honest opinion, do I think the Dubs are trading Jonathan Kaminga this season? I hope not, because that would be stupid as F-bomb. That's Ken Mamba's words on mine. Here is what my source within the Warriors told me. One of my sources. I have, I have two that I trust mightily there in that building. Um, they said they'd be willing to bet a year's worth of their salary that Kaminga would get traded. Now, does that mean they're actually going to trade him? No, it's not a guarantee. But adding to that, what my source is telling me is that the team is looking at trade options. They're taking calls. They're exploring it. And I do agree with anyone out there who says it would be dumb to trade Jonathan Kaminga because I see the talent that apparently Steve Kerr does not see. I think if you give this kid a chance to develop, he will turn into a superstar. But so far, those sentiments are not shared by the head coach of the Golden State Warriors. So even though I don't want to see him go, if the if the head coach of the Golden State Warriors doesn't want to play him and he's just going to waste away, might as well trade him and get something back. I saw someone in the chat uh, say... Um, that uh where was this? i'm gonna see if I, if I could find it real quick that oh, here rich dub wrote that he thinks the warriors need another legit superstar and maybe you can do that with a trade involving jonathan kaminga and again i mentioned pascal siakam i know that doesn't make everyone excited but i think siakam would be a game changer for this warriors team i think if you could pull off a trade where you're getting back both siakam and og ananobi you're fine you, you have a stacked, deep roster that can compete with anyone in the NBA. I wholeheartedly believe that. Um, simply because, like, you're not... The Warriors are not utilizing Kaminga as is. So it's not like you're losing a lot if you trade them to begin with. You're, you're sacrificing the future more than anything else, which I don't like either. I don't like the fact that there seems to be no concern about the Warriors' future in a lot of these decisions that are being made. I mean, you traded Jordan Poole for Chris Paul. All right, Chris Paul is gone in a matter of months. So I, you know, I regardless, that's what I'm hearing. Now, in regards to who that other player could be that could be traded along with Jonathan Kaminga, let's listen to Kevin Garnett and Paul Pierce. They had an interesting conversation about the Golden State Warriors. And let's hear what these two have to say. Yeah. I'm, what is your uh, level of worry, number one? One to ten. Uh, right now, currently, I'm worried. It's like an eight. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Are you worried? And if so, yeah. I'm what is like, your level of worry, number wise? One to ten. Uh, right now, currently, I'm worried. It's like an eight. Wow. Yeah, because wow. for the simple fact. That's major, Pete. Yeah, that's major. Well, the mistakes that, well, actually, the the Golden State, it's on them, but it's on the players that they brought in. Like, think about this. Like, right now, with that core, if Wiseman had turned into what they needed him to turn mm -hmm. into, Jordan Poole, Jordan Poole uh, uh, Kaminga, 
Comedian Wiggins was part of that. And, and Wiggins, you know, they supposed to keep the dynasty going. Mm -hmm. But they didn't pan out like they thought they would because no way it should be all this stuff talked about Clay Thompson when you brought Wiggins in to, you know, eventually take on that type of Clay Thompson role to take the pressure off of him to mm -hmm. where he don't have to, as he gets older and the miles under his yep. injuries, dealing with the long playoff runs, Wiggins supposed to be giving you what Clay giving you now to where Clay could kind of step and take a step back and be like the third wheel. You, so, you know what I'm saying? So Clay Thompson was a, a, a great two way player. Yeah. And I thought at first his defense was ahead of his, sh his scoring. Then he became a dynamic scorer mm -hmm. who can still defend. Wiggins, I'm not calling him that dynamic scorer, but he was definitely supposed to step in and take the burden of whoever's the best guard yeah. of the night. If they playing Luca, uh uh Clay, go play um go play somebody else. Uh Wiggins will take Luca, blah blah blah, right, right? right? All, All the down. tough matchups. Yeah. And he hasn't panned out, Pete. Charge behind Curry to where Wiggins should be out there giving you 20, 25 a night at this stage because he's young legs. He's still athletic. He, you know, he ain't got the same mouths as these other guys. And he ain't stepped up. What do you do? What's the solution to all this, Pete? Do you break this up? You got to make a trade, bro. And two, you it's, gotta too, make a trade. it's too heavy on Steph. I still believe in Steph. I believe in I believe too. in Draymond that you can still build around them if you put the right pieces that they can win a championship, but you got to make some moves. As currently constructed, this team is barely a playoff team. I know, this team is not a playoff team. It's not a playoff team. At all. Well, a play-in no. team? No, not at well, all. We, well, we'll see, we'll see. Well, I'm just I'm just watching teams get better than them. All right, so so you heard what the, what the two gentlemen had to say. Kevin Garnett doesn't think the Warriors are even a play-in team the way they're currently constructed. Paul Pierce has a little more respect for him, thinks they could at least be a play-in. But regardless, I mean, are, are we seriously satisfied if the Warriors are a play-in team? All we've heard is championship, championship, championship. The Warriors traded 23-year-old Jordan Poole for 38 going on 39-year-old Chris Paul because they were supposed to win a championship this year, or at least compete for it. So, but what I thought was most interesting about that conversation is that they both single out Andrew Wiggins. Hard to disagree with them. Andrew Wiggins, before he came to the Golden State Warriors, was a routine 20-plus a night scoring two-guard. The dude could score. Now, was he a great shooter? Eh, not really. He wasn't bad at it either, though. But when you look at Andrew Wiggins this year, and again, there was one report from ESPN which said that Wiggins came into training camp this season out of shape. And that the team wasn't very happy about that. But regardless of whether or not he's in shape or not, to see this level of regression, he's playing 27 minutes a night, which is below his career average, by the way. Um, Andrew Wiggins, for his career, averages 35 minutes a night. This year, he's playing 27. So it's not like Kerr is just oblivious to the fact that Wiggins has completely regressed as a player. But in the season before he came to the Warriors, he was averaging 22.4 points per game. He was, now look, he was a 33% three-point shooter. And he's always been in that 33 range, which is just good enough. That's a Mendoza line for three-point shooting. It's below the league average for his position, but 33% shooting from three equals 50% from two. So you don't hate on that. And since he came to the Warriors, his first year, he was a 38% three-point shooter, then 39.3. Last year, 39.6. This year, 26% from beyond the arc. Andrew Wiggins on the season is only averaging 12.6 points per game below his career average of 18.9. So... I'm totally with Paul Pierce and, and Garnett there. Like, th whatever is going on with Wiggins, and Greg Silver was also talking about that, this is a guy who's 28 years old, all right? And I've been picking the brain of a lot of other people in terms of trying to find another example of a player at this stage of his career with his track record having this level of a precipitous fall and can't find one. On this show, people have brought up players like Vin Baker, Anthony Davis. But, I mean, these are also two. Vin Baker was also like 
I think I'm pretty sure he was older than than Wiggins. And he was also a big who put on weight, who had alcohol issues. And Anthony Davis is playing fine. I mean, he's he's you know, he's not he hasn't gone anywhere. So um I don't understand what's going on. And Keith Willis writes, he can't even get 20 now. You're absolutely correct. Uh Antonio Taylor Cleggett writes. We came from seeing Andrew Wiggins putting guys on posters. Now he's looks like he's battling Shaq and Cream in the paint almost every possession. You're absolutely right. What I'm seeing is a player who looks a step slow. Like he doesn't, he's not playing at the same speed everyone else is. The why of that is incredibly frustrating. So whether or not that means he's the likely trade target, because I just don't see the Warriors trading Clay Thompson. I just do not see that happening. Um, I would consider it if you knew for certain Clay was going to leave after this year, but if, but who knows what his intentions are. And regardless, I just, you know, I, that's, that's a whole discussion for another day, but Wiggins looks like he seems logically the person you'd want to move. Even if his trade value is kind of weak, at least you could use that salary. And then you incentivize with throwing a pick or two in to get the players you want, but it's brutal. Ken Mamba writes, what if we trade? Moody, Kaminga, Chris Paul, and picks for OG Ananobi and Pascal Siakam. The Moody part of it is tough. I don't, I don't, giving up both those guys, I'd have to think about it because it would result in a championship. It would. I really do believe that. I, I do believe if you stat, if you bring those two players in, yeah, I, I, I think that you could get a ring out of that. <laughs> anyway, so. That's what's going on with the Warriors. Um, here's who their most optimal lineups are before we wrapping up the show tonight. The most optimal lineup for the Golden State Warriors, a five-man lineup based on net rating, and more specifically, uh, their, their plus-minus, is, and it's weird to say this, but this is, right now, this is their most optimal lineup. They played 85 minutes together. And that's Chris Paul, Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, Andrew Wiggins, and Kevon Looney. They're at plus 30. They're outscoring opponents when those five are together by 30 points. That's wild. The sex, so I, 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 that doesn't make sense, but that's numbers don't lie. Set number two in terms of plus minus. And let's say, let's say give a minimum of 30 minutes played together. Steph, Draymond. Wiggins, Looney, and Moody. You're basically swapping Clay Thompson for Moses Moody. That's your second most effective five man lineup. There are plus 17. Your third most effective lineup Chris Paul, Clay Thompson, Dario Sharich, Jonathan Kaminga, and Brandon Pajemski. There are plus 13. What is the team's fourth most effective lineup? Clay Thompson, this is weird. Clay, Th Clay Thompson, Corey Joseph, Dario Saric, Jonathan Kaminga, Brandon Pajemski. And your fifth most effective lineup, Chris Paul, Dario Saric, Gary Payton II, Trace Jackson Davis, and Brandon Pajemski, plus 12. Those are the lineups that are most effective for the Warriors this year. That's part of the reason why Steve Kerr is saying he's confused. Because <laughs> that's a lot of wild mix and match lineups. It is weird that, that Corey Joseph was in there. You know, by the way, what the worst lineup is for this team? The worst lineup for this team is also the worst lineup in the entire NBA. With a minus 25... Steph, Clay, Draymond, Wiggins, and Looney. They have played 113 minutes together this season. And there are minus 25. Eek. Eek. So there you go. Those are your lineups. I hope everyone has... Uh... Yeah, Pinoy, I do agree with you. Gary Payne the second is awesome. Everyone will be back at this tomorrow night. Warriors play the Thunder. Thank you very much for joining me. And let's hope they turn things around. Bye-bye.
Peace out. Bye.